Do you genuinely not know who the Beatles are? Genuinely. And I'm in a really, really, really complicated situation. Did you reach out to any of the surviving Beatles, to Paul or Ringo? Did you consider that uh, in, in preparation for I this? never did. I know that Danny and, and Richard had to kind of get their blessing. You know, Danny, I think, had kind of written to uh, Paul and Ringo and, and Olivia and, mm -hmm. and Yoko, and, and we kind of got their blessing to go ahead with it, which was, which was huge. I think Ringo's seen it and, mm -hmm. and has sent a nice note to Danny and, and as has Olivia mm -hmm. Harrison. If, if they feel that we've captured something truthful about things that are very close to them, then, mm -hmm. then I guess we've done something good. I imagine there was uh, an audition process, was, was that pretty lengthy? Yeah, so I first did a tape. I was out in New York, I was doing a play and I, I did a tape uh, and all that came with the tape was that it's a Danny Boyle movie with musical elements, but I didn't have a script at the time, so I had to do a monologue from a play that they'd sent through, and uh, I had to do a Coldplay song of my choice. A Coldplay song? That was the instruction, so I, I did that. I chose We Never Change. It's one of the greatest songs ever written. Well, it's not Coldplay. It's not Fix You. What made you select that one? It's a really sweet song. I really like it. It's a beautiful song, I think. And it's just an acoustic track, you know. Mm -hmm. Coldplay had this big, amazing, kind of stadium-fitting sound, but... Um, I was like, I don't want to try and recreate that just with a guitar. Did they give you any indication why they wanted a Coldplay song in the in the audition well, rather that, than a Beatles song? At, at that point, the Ed Sheeran part that we have in the film mm -hmm. was Chris Martin. So I suppose that's why when they were initially weren't telling people what the story was, mm -hmm. they, they said Coldplay to kind of tie into the current draft of the script, but also throw people off the scent. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes. Hello, love. I'm just at uh, Jed and Sheila's house listening to Jack's new song. Let him be. Let it be. Let it be. Did you go to like a Beatles boot camp once, once you <laughs> got this? I mean, you have to, what do you perform like about 15 so songs of theirs? I think we had about 20. 20? And I, perhaps around 17, I think have made the cut, if I'm not mistaken. But yeah, it's, it's a lot of songs. And so we, we struck this idea of, of setting up a room at the offices in London and making it look like Jack's bedroom. So putting posters up all over the wall and, and a piano in there and a, a Wurlitzer keyboard in there and a record player and of course mm. the guitars. Yesterday, all my troubles seem so far away. And I spent two, uh, two and a half months uh, in that room. We had to kind of mold the songs into our own versions because they don't exist and right. we can't be beholden to the originals. Mm -hmm. And what Danny wanted to do was, was do something different to make the songs sound fresh, yet familiar, of course, but almost make them sound new. You said a few didn't make the cut. Were there scenes that you guys filmed that aren't in the movie, or did you, did you just learn those songs and they, there were never scenes for them? What can you say about that? There was, I mean, the, uh, there was a big one, Something, which uh, was seen in the trailer, uh, playing that on the James Corden show, but that, that scene sadly didn't, didn't make it into the finished product. Well, that was like a, the, the, the main one that didn't make the cut, but the rest of them are all there in, in ways. Mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, there's ones that I learned, like Hard Day's Night, which in the film you only hear like the opening, that famous opening chord. Behind the scenes, are you talking about like theories on what exactly caused this riff in the atmosphere? Uh, there were times me and Lily would be like, what actually happened here? But we never really settled on exactly what it was, whether it was some kind of deviant person in a power station somewhere. <laughs> was it Thanos? I, I've, That's I've, what it I've, was. I've yes. heard their theories that maybe this is this is a crossover on, event. On, on the, yeah, I mean the Marvel Cinematic Universe is expanding. You know, if we make as much money as they do at the box office. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and it's definitely a Marvel movie. <laughs>